sure. So, will you say yes? Marinette glanced at the box, then back at him. I want to, I really do, but you know I don't have feelings for you. He just smiled. That wasn't what the Kwamis had been telling him, but he understood why Marinette was confused. Apart from her parents, the only people she could lean on for support right now were Adrian and Cat Noir. I know, this isn't a date, it's an appreciation night. We can have one of those, can't we? What if there's an Akuma? Then we fight the Akuma and I'll appreciate you afterwards. She let out a little laugh at that. Are you really sure about this? He walked over to her and took her hands in his. I am. Please, let me do this for you. For one night. It'll just be us. She smiled. Okay, Kitty. The smile he gave her in return was huge. I'll see you tomorrow then, at eight, on the roof terrace of Montparnasse Tower. And wear the dress. Can I open it now, she asked, going over to the table. Uh, maybe wait until I've gone, Cat Noir said, a little nervous now. I'm sure you'll look amazing in it, but you're a designer. You might not like it. If you really hate it, you can wear something else. I'm sure I'll love it. Marinette turned to him with a smile. Thank you, Kitty, for everything. She went up onto her tiptoes and kissed him on the cheek, and he immediately blushed. No problem. You deserve to be treated like the princess you are, he said with a wink, and then she blushed. I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you know how to dance. He took out his baton then, not waiting for her response, and he vaulted over her house. He stayed on the roof though, obscured by a chimney, and he poked his head around it. He watched as Marinette opened the dress box, and he was able to hear the happy little gasp as she saw the red and black dress. She took it out of the box and held it up to herself, then twirled around with it held against her, the skirt flaring out. She giggled a little, and he spotted a tiny red dot fly out onto the balcony. Tiki said something, although he wasn't close enough to hear, and Marinette gasped. I don't know how to dance. Well, I know I've danced with Adrian before, but Cat Noir didn't say what kind of dancing. Maybe I should ask Adrian for some pointers tomorrow? He smiled and set off in the direction of home. He'd be more than happy to help Marinette learn how to dance. Today had not gone as Adrian had planned. He had planned on a nice normal day at school, or as normal as it could be when all but one person in your class was ignoring you. He'd teach Marinette how to dance on their lunch break, then go home, do his homework, and then do the final preparations for tonight before Marinette arrived. But that hadn't happened. He'd been woken up with the news of a last minute photo shoot, and he didn't get to school until the lunch break was ending. As soon as he'd arrived at DuPont, Adrian had checked first the locker room, and then the art room for Marinette, but she was nowhere in sight. The bell had gone then, and Adrian went to Miss Bustier's class, and thankfully, Marinette was sat at the back of the room, looking out of the window, extremely despondent. This was nothing like the giggling girl he'd seen last night. Adrian, Miss Bustier said, standing up from her desk. You miss a lot of work this morning. A lot of it was partner work. I assume you'll be working with Marinette, and she's agreed to stay behind after school to help you. Is that okay with you? He nodded without any hesitation. He would never pass up an opportunity to spend time with Marinette, and he needed to find out what had happened to make her so sad. Can I just text Natalie to let her know? Of course. It'll probably only take you and Marinette an hour or so. A club are meeting in here after school, though, but Miss Mendeleev's room will be free. Adrian quickly sent the text, then he practically ran up the steps to his seat, and Marinette turned and gave him a small smile. Hey, she said. She sounded so timid. Hey, I am so sorry about this morning. It came out of nowhere. Did you get my text? Marinette just nodded. He sent her a text telling her where he was, but Adrian was worried she hadn't got it since she had never responded. Well, you're here now. He narrowed his eyes. This didn't sound like Marinette. Is everything okay? Does something happen? She looked away from him. Everything's fine. Actually, I think I'll be okay sat on my own at the back now. You should go and sit with Lila. Are you crazy? He asked, incredulous. He looked over at where Lila was sat, and she was staring at the two of them, as were Alia and Alex. When the three girls saw him looking their way, they all turned back to face the front. There was definitely something going on. Adrian looked back at Marinette. What's happened? Nothing, but from tomorrow, you should sit at the front and spend less time with me. I'll be fine. As she spoke, she got quieter and quieter, and she looked like she was going to cry. No. Marinette looked back up at him. Adrian, please, you have to. He reached for her hand under the desk and gently squeezed it. Not until you tell me why. What happened? 
She stared down at their hands and opened her mouth to speak, but then Lila coughed and Marinette pulled her hand out of his. Nothing. Miss Bustier began the lesson then, so there was no more time to beg Marinette to tell him what had happened, but it was on his mind all the way through their afternoon classes. Marinette looked physically fine. Well, she looked very sad, but it didn't look like she had been physically hurt in any way. Lila had probably said something to her, but it seemed like Ali and Alex had joined in in whatever she was doing. Surely that showed them just how nasty and vile Lila was? But at this point, Lila had been slowly manipulating them for at least six months. If Lila told them jumping off a bridge would help with all of her fake ailments, they'd probably do it. The final bell of the day went, and Marinette grabbed her bag and hurried out of her seat. Adrian grabbed his things and went after her, ignoring the rest of their classmates, and followed her down into the now empty science room. He slammed the door out of frustration, but regretted it when he saw Marinette flinch. Sorry, I'm sorry. Please, just tell me what's wrong. Marinette smiled at him. Nothing is. Come on, the sooner we get done, the sooner we can go home. She placed her bag on the front desk and took out their shared history work, but from in between the papers fell out a small sheet with something scribbled on it. Adrian saw Marinette's eyes widen and he quickly snatched it up, holding it out of her reach as he read it. No, Adrian, don't! She grabbed at his arm, but he ignored her and read the note. Stay away from Adrian Agrest, or we'll do to you what you did to Lila. Beneath the threat was a small drawing of a crude set of stairs. One figure was stood at the top, smiling, and at the bottom was another stick figure, this one with pigtails. Marinette jumped up and snatched the note from him, but it was too late. He'd already read it, and judging by the scared look on her face, she knew he'd read it too. It's nothing, she said with a nervous smile. No, it's not. They... Adrian took a deep breath, trying his best to calm down. Marinette had told Cat Noir the other week that she didn't tell Adrian everything because of how protective he was over her. If he got angry now and went after Lila, his father would surely hear and pull him out of school. He couldn't let himself react how he wanted to, even though the situation certainly deserved that. He wasn't sure if Lila would go through with pushing Marinette down the stairs, but that was the point of a threat, to scare you into doing what the other person wanted. Either way, they couldn't do nothing about this. Someone had threatened to seriously hurt his lady. That wasn't okay. Lila's threatened you. It's not Lila's handwriting. Adrian looked back at the note Marinette was now holding. She was right. The writing wasn't Lila's. It was Alia's. Alia, he said, and Marinette put the note on the desk and sat down on a stool. I don't know if Lila put her up to this or they did it together, and maybe with Alex too. Whichever, it's gone too far. And they've won. I'm not fighting this. Adrian shook his head and came to stand in front of her. So you're just going to give up? After fighting her for all this time, you're just going to stop? Marinette looked up at him with tears in her eyes. What am I supposed to do, Adrian? She's threatened me, whichever one of them it is. Over you. I don't want either of us getting hurt. They might not do anything, but I don't want to risk it. And if I ignore this and we keep hanging around each other but do nothing, they'll probably make another threat. She looked away from him then. I can handle them threatening me, but what if they threaten you? He took both of her hands in his. They know they can't because of my father. But what if they do? I don't want you to get hurt. Adrian squeezed her hands. I don't want you to get hurt either. Marinette pulled her hands out of his. Then you need to stay away from me. He shook his head. No, obeying what Lila wants isn't the way to deal with this. We have to talk to Mr. Damocles. This can't continue. But then your father will find out. Adrian sighed. His father couldn't know about this. I don't know what to do for the best, but I'll think about it. And what are we supposed to do about school tomorrow? He shrugged. I don't know, but I told you that I'd be here for you and I meant it. I'm not going back on my word, but there's nothing we can do. There will be something, okay? We can't let Lila win. Marinette bit her lip. She looked unsure, but that was a given when they didn't even have a proper solution. Okay, thank you. There were still tears glimmering in her eyes, and without even thinking, Adrian hooked her. Whenever he hugged her when she was upset, whether as Adrian or as Cat Noir, she always felt so small to him. He knew she was incredibly brave and strong, but until recently, Ladybug hadn't let him see this side to her. And as happy as he was that she was opening up to him now, it was breaking him to see the girl he was in love with like this. He could feel her shuddering in his arms as she tried to stop herself from crying, 
and Adrian glanced over at the windows that looked out onto the courtyard. The bell had gone quite a while ago now, and there didn't seem to be any students left, or at least not that Adrian could see from here. Apart from the club meeting in their usual classroom, it seemed like they were probably alone at school. He had been so occupied with what was going on with Marinette though, that he hadn't even registered the other students leaving. Adrian felt Marinette push at his chest and he pulled back. She no longer looked like she was about to cry, but she didn't look happy either. We should get this work done. You have somewhere to be? Despite the sad look on her face, Marinette blushed. Kind of. Not until later though. Oh? Where are you going? he asked as he sat down on the stool beside her, pulling out his tablet and textbooks. Oh, well, um, a friend of mine, he asked me to this, um, I guess it's like a dance. Like a date, he asked with a smirk. Marinette's blush got worse. No, not a date. I think. You want it to be a date? I, no, it's just... She sighed and bit her bottom lip. It's complicated. Adrian frowned. He knew this wasn't a date. And he knew that Marinette knew it wasn't a date. But now it sounded like she didn't want to go at all. She'd sounded so happy last night when he asked her to go, though. Perhaps she just sounded sad because of what had happened today. And he understood why she thought it was complicated. If the Kwamis were correct, Marinette had feelings for two people, which would surely be messing with her head. You don't sound too thrilled about it. No, I am. He's my best friend, actually. He bought me a dress and everything. Oh? Adrian asked, one eyebrow raised. Is it nice? It's beautiful. He smiled. He'd ordered a custom dress to fit her perfectly, Tiki having helped him with the measurements, and he designed it himself too. He was really unsure if she'd like it, but Adrian knew Marinette wouldn't lie to him about it. I'm glad. She turned to him, an eyebrow raised. You're glad? Yeah, he said nervously, realising he messed up a bit. Glad that you like it, and that you'll get to go on this not date thing. You deserve to have a fun night. You work too hard. Marinette's eyes seemed to gloss over, as if she was thinking about something else. Then she stared down at the desk. There is one problem, though. Oh? Well, it's a dance, and I don't know how to dance. Adrian smirked. I believe you do. You've danced with me before, at Chloe's party, and in New York. Even though Marinette still had her head turned away from him, he could still see the blush that rose to her cheeks at the mention of those memories. Yes, but that was more of... slow dancing? My friend didn't say what kind of dancing I needed to know for tonight. Adrian smiled and stood up, holding out his hand for Marinette. I'll teach you. She looked at his outstretched hand. Are you sure? He smiled in reassurance, and she took his hand. Adrian pulled her up from the stool, and they stood in the aisle that ran down the centre of the room between all of the desks. You know the basic hold, he said, lifting up the hand of hers he was holding, and placed his other hand on her waist, and she put her other hand on his shoulder. I mean, I don't know what dance this friend of yours is planning, but I would assume it's not a Charleston or a Samba or something. Marinette smiled at him, this one thankfully genuine. I doubt that. I would guess something slower. Let's go with a waltz then. And since he asked you, I'm assuming he knows how to dance, so he'll be leading. So you need to trust him. Do you? With my life. To anyone else, that would be an odd statement. But to Adrian, who knew Marinette was Ladybug, that statement only made him smile. Let him lead you, but we'll go over some basic steps. Any waltz is basically made out of box steps where you move around in a square with each other. Let's try it. Adrian moved his left foot back, and Marinette followed, her right foot stepping into the place where his foot had just been, but she was staring down at the floor. He took his hand off her waist and gently cupped her cheek, tilting her head back up. Don't look at the floor. Keep your eyes on me. What if I step on your feet? And then you step on my feet. It's not a big deal. He put his hand back on her waist and they moved again, going to the side this time. Marinette's movements were unsure, but she kept eye contact with Adrian this time and he smiled. Good. And now back, and then to the left. Together, they managed it, and Marinette smiled. I did it. Again. And faster. Just trust me. Marinette nodded with a smile and they did another box step, and another and another, and soon Adrian was moving them up and down the aisle of the classroom, letting go of Marinette after every three box steps so he could spin her. Each time she came back into his arms, she would give him a huge smile, and Adrian was sure he was blushing just as badly as her. He loved holding her in his arms. She was the most important person in his world. How come you know how to dance like this? Marinette asked as they slowed down a little so they could both catch their breaths. My mum taught me. 
When I was little, I used to stand on her feet and she would show me how to dance. Marinette smiled at him. Your mum sounds like she was an amazing person. She was. They slowed down a little more. I wish she could have met you. She would have loved you. I would have loved her too. I'm sure she's the reason why you're so wonderful. Adrian felt his heart thud in his chest and he removed his hand from Marinette's waist so he could spin her. Her pigtails flew up a little as she twirled, letting out a little giggle, and Adrian couldn't help but smile. This was his lady. He kept staring, not concentrating, and when Marinette spun back into his arms, she tripped a little. He put both hands on her waist to steady her, and she gripped his shoulders. You okay? he asked, voice automatically slipping to a whisper. It was just like that other night in her room. Adrian was close enough that he could count her freckles. With a faint blush on her cheeks, Marinette nodded but otherwise made no plan to move. So Adrian started to move them slowly back and forth, like the slow dancing they'd done at Chloe's party. His princess smiled and leant her head against Adrian's chest, and he just hoped she couldn't feel his heartbeat fluttering. He tightened the hold he had on her waist and started moving them in slow circles, not going too far, just holding Marinette close to him. She truly meant everything to him. Adrian just hoped what he planned for tonight would help her, it was breaking his heart to see her so sad when he knew how incredible she was. He bumped into Miss Mendeleev's desk, stopping their movements, and Marinette brought her head out of his chest. They were too close together, but neither teenager moved, just stared at each other. Adrian glanced at her lips, and he saw Marinette's eyes widen before she glanced at his lips too. Taking that as a sign, Adrian started to lean in. Marinette started to lean in too, going up onto her tiptoes. But just as he started to close his eyes, he felt Marinette pull away from him. Stop. He opened his eyes and saw that Marinette was still in his arms, but she was no longer touching him and was leaning away from him. Adrian immediately let go of her. I'm sorry, I should have asked. She went back over to the desk and started packing away her things. It's fine, I just... I can't do this right now. I'm confused and... Her hands trembled as she shoved more things into her bag. I'm sorry too. I'll text you the instructions for the work you missed. I have to go. He didn't stop her as she hurried out of the classroom, just watching her go with tears in her eyes. When the classroom door shut, Adrian let out a groan and leant against Miss Mendeleev's desk. He shouldn't have done that. This wasn't what she needed right now. He was just supposed to be teaching her how to dance. And then he went and tried to kiss her. She'll hate me. Plag flew out of his bag and went over. She doesn't. She was going to kiss you too. Tiki and I were watching. But this is Marinette. She gets easily embarrassed. She won't even be able to look at me tomorrow. I messed it all up. I'm sure you haven't. Come on, get your work done. And then you need to get ready to go and meet her. Adria nodded and went back over to the desk they'd been sat at. Marinette had left behind the worksheets he'd needed, along with a note from Alia. This whole situation was already a mess, which he'd just made worse, and he didn't know how to start fixing most of it. Cat Noir paced around the roof of Montparnasse Tower. It was approaching eight in the evening, and things were almost fully set up. The projector was connected to one of the outlets they had up here, and the cloth screen was rolled up along the windows. At the other side of the roof, the one closest to the Eiffel Tower, was a table and two chairs. Plates, drinks, and cutlery already set up there, along with a single candle, the flame fluttering in the slight breeze. There were more candles too, lining the roof, creating a soft glow to the otherwise darkening sky. The only things left were for the food to arrive and for marinettes. There was a knock on the roof access door and Cat Noir went over and unlocked it. Jean and Sarah, who worked at Mare Bourgeois' hotel, were there, each holding a plate covered with a silver cloche. On the table, please. The two of them obliged, walking across the roof and placing the dishes on the table before they left again, and Cat Noir locked the door behind them. The viewing deck at Montparnasse Tower was open from early in the morning until late at night, mainly for tourists but Adrian had used the money he earned from modelling to book the roof out for the whole night, but he paid his Cat Noir, and in cash, so no cars could be traced back to his father, and paid extra for the roof access key, so no one else could get up here. He would be transformed, but Marinette wouldn't be. He had to make sure her identity remained a secret, and as such, as soon as he'd arrived, he'd search the roof for any hidden cameras. It seemed like they were safe up here. With a sigh, Cat Noir wandered over to the viewing deck that showed the Eiffel Tower, being careful not to knock over any candles. The sun was only just starting to set, but the tower's lights were already on, twinkling golden against the orange and pink streaked sky. It looked beautiful. 
But Adrian couldn't help but feel a little sad. Why had he tried to kiss Marinette? He knew he wanted to. Of course he wanted to. He was in love with her. But why did he pick then, not longer after she'd told him that someone who was supposed to be her best friend threatened to push her down a set of stairs? He was an idiot. It looked so pretty. Count Noir turned around and automatically smiled when he saw Ladybug stood on the roof. He knew that she didn't know he was Adrian, but he was worried that what Adrian had done would have upset her enough that she would have changed her mind about tonight. Not as pretty as you? Ladybug blushed. Thank you. He walked over to her. Did you wear the dress? She nodded. Can I see? Spots off. Once the pink light faded, Cat Noir just stared at Marinette. True to her word, she had worn the dress, and it looked amazing on her. It was a red dress, of course, all made from lace, with the front hem finishing at her knees and the black going down a little further. From a distance, the skirt looked like it had big black polka dots on it, but up close, they were tiny black flowers. It cinched in at her waist with a black belt that had a tiny bow on it. The straps and bust were black too, and Marinette had worn the dress with a pair of black ballet flats, and her hair was up in a bun, rather than her signature pigtails. She bit her lip when he didn't say anything. Does it look okay? He nodded. Yes, of course. Sorry. You just look so beautiful. Marinette blushed but smiled at him. Thank you. She was a little quiet, which wasn't surprising after the events of today. He held out his hand to her. This way, my lady. She slipped her hand into his and he led her over to the table and pulled out her chair for her. Marinette smiled as she sat down and he took the seat opposite her, noticing the tension in her shoulders now. Is everything okay? Yeah, just worried about Akumas. He smiled. Relax. If we have to fight, this will be here for us when we get back. Marinette nodded, but he could see she didn't relax fully, which he wasn't surprised by. He took the cloches off the plates and Marinette narrowed her eyes. This looks too nice. It's just chicken confit? I mean expensive. You don't need to spend money on me, Kitty. He chuckled. I don't know how you think I got the entire roof of this building for us if it wasn't with money. She looked a little sad again. Kitty, I mean it. I won't ever be able to repay you for something like this. Cat Noir reached across the table and covered Marinette's hand with his own. Princess... Having you in my life has been payment enough after everything you've done for me. Just let me take care of you. She gave him a small smile. Okay. I'm just sorry there's no dessert, but there's no fridge up here to keep it cool. But we can always go for ice cream afterwards. Now, tell me about your day. Tell me about yours instead, Marinette said as she started to eat. He just smirked. If I do that, it'll give you clues about who I am. So, how was your day? Marinette sighed and started to eat. It was a nightmare. Cat Noir nearly dropped his fork. Was she referring to their almost kiss? Up until he had lent in, she had seemed to enjoy most of their time spent together today, even if it had been short-lived. What happened? She sighed again. Lila. Or not Lila. I don't know. What do you mean? He asked, starting to eat now. At least she hadn't mentioned Adrian as part of her nightmare day. Adrian wasn't at school today until after lunch. He had a last minute photo shoot, so I was completely on my own. But Lila left me alone, which was suspicious, because any time Adrian isn't there, she doesn't miss her chance. She lays into me, but she didn't today. I went home for lunch, but I left my bag in my locker. So when I got back to school, I obviously went to get it, and there was a note in my locker. She made up a lie the other month and told everyone I pushed her down the stairs, but I would never do that. Yeah, I don't like her, but I would never do that. I know you wouldn't, princess. Well, everyone at school still believes I did, and the note threatened to do the same thing to me if I didn't stay away from Adrian. Count Noir's hand clenched up around the cutlery he was holding. He knew he already knew this information, so he had to act like this was his first time hearing it, but it wasn't that hard to get angry again. Any time he thought about someone trying to harm Marinette was enough to get him riled up. She said what, he asked, jaw clenched. Marinette put her knife and fork down. Push me down the stairs. Count Noir stood up and knelt down in front of her, taking her hands in his. I'm so sorry this is happening, princess. She shrugged. It's not like I can do anything about it. What about Adrian, he asked, going to sit back down. Why him? She has a crush on him. Well, one second. She paused to eat some more. This is really good. Anyway, I'm not sure she does have a crush on him, 
When Lila lies, it's about her being rich and famous and important, which Adrian is. I think she just wants to be with him because by association, she'll actually be all of those things. But like I told you before, he doesn't believe Lila's lies. He's on my side, so she threatened me. Said if I don't stay away from Adrian, she'll do the same to me. Or someone else will do it to me. Marinette's fork chimed against the plate as her hand shook. In the science classroom, she had been visibly scared. But since arriving here with him, she had been trying to hide how she actually felt. It was obvious now that she was just as frightened as she had been at school. It was in Alia's handwriting. I guess Lila could have made Alia write it, or Alia volunteered to do it, or Alia could have done it without Lila even knowing. But she still did it. And what are you going to do about it? You can't let anyone get away with threatening to physically hurt you. I, for one, won't let them touch you. Marinette just shrugged. Thank you, but there's nothing to be done. Adrian said he'd think of something, but there's nothing. He can't vouch for me because his dad will find out and pull him out of school, but without him, no one will believe me. And even if he did speak up, I doubt anyone would believe me anyway. I guess I'll just have to stay away from him. Cat Noir gripped his cutlery again, trying to keep himself calm. He had probably been close to being akumatized with the way he had acted in the lab before. He did not, under any circumstances, want to be separated from Marinette at school, but he had to stay cool. But he makes you happy. A slight blush heated up her cheeks. Yes, but so do you. And Lila can't stop me from seeing you. And I'm sure Adrian and I will still speak to each other, just not at school. Marinette's shoulders went from being raised in tension to drooping with sadness. He wanted to get out of his chair and hug her and reassure her and tell her everything was going to be okay, but that would be suspicious. The marinette in front of him was masking how sad she truly was, but the marinette from the science lab had been on the verge of crying. Him having that kind of reaction wouldn't match what he had just been told. Well, if anything does happen, you call me and I'll be at your school in an instant. Thanks, Kitty. She smiled as she said it, but she didn't particularly sound like she had believed him. Did anything else happen, he asked, as Marinette started to eat again, and she shook her head. She obviously didn't want to talk about Adrian. Perhaps he had really upset her. Or maybe she just didn't want to talk about the boy she had feelings for in front of him? Marinette was considerate of how Cat Noir felt. She wouldn't talk about Adrian unless necessary in front of him, now that he knew she had feelings for him. If only she knew they were the same person, and that would at least put her heart at rest. Well, let's talk about something more fun then, he suggested. The dress, Marinette said, her smile now real. It's beautiful. You really think so? Of course. Well, I designed it myself. Her whole face lit up. Really? Then I love it even more. She stared down at it, and the smile faded from her face as her hand smoothed over the material. Marinette? What's wrong? She looked up at him with a smile. It's nothing. You know you can tell me if there is something right. Her eyes couldn't meet his, and she nodded. I know, Kitty. Whatever it was, she didn't want to tell him, and he wouldn't push her. Marinette would open up eventually. Are you done eating? When she nodded, he stood up and held out his hand to her. I want to show you something. She let him lead her out to the middle of the roof, then he left her there. He ran over to the viewing platform where the sheet was rolled up, and he pulled it down. Then he went to the projector in front of it. His phone was next to it, and he connected it up to the projector, and it showed the home screen of his phone. Marinette giggled. Your wallpaper is me, she asked, not moving from where he'd left her. Of course. Did you expect anything less? He selected the presentation he prepared, then dashed back over to Marinette as it loaded up. What did you have to show me, she asked as he took her hand again. Just watch, he said, staring at the sheet. The presentation started then, and the whole show was filled with pictures of Ladybug. Some of them were action shots, taken by Alia when Ladybug was in the middle of an Akuma battle, although Adrian had been sure to edit out the Ladyblog logo. Others were more candid and showed her laughing and smiling and helping civilians, or sat on rooftops with him, staring at the stars. I don't get it, she whispered. Cat Noir squeezed her hand. Lately, it seems you've been having some self-esteem issues, amongst other things. Not helped by Lila. You can't see how amazing you are. I wanted to show you how I see you. Marinette leant against him. Kitty, she whispered, voice thick, like she was about to cry, but they kept watching the photos on the makeshift screen. The next one showed Ladybug, hanging upside down from a lamppost with her yo-yo, just to make some school children laugh. See? You didn't have to do that. 
You don't have to do any of this. But you do. You're wonderful. Marinette didn't say anything, just kept watching the pictures pass by. Most of them were of her and Kat Noir, and the one the show ended on was of them too, late at night in the summer, their feet dangling in the fountains at the Trocadero, splashing water at each other. The girl in those pictures, Kat Noir whispered, turning to look at Marinette, but she kept staring at the sheets, is as wonderful as the one stood next to me, but she's not the same. That girl is happy. You are not. Please, let me help you be her again. That's all I want, for you to come back to me. Marinette's bottom lip trembled, but she rolled her top lip against it, stopping the tremors. Cat Noir, I... She stopped speaking when music started playing from his phone. It had been cued to play after the presentation. The piece Adrian had picked was slow, matching the beat of the song they danced to in New York. He had wanted to use the same song, but that would give everything away. He had to settle for something similar. He let go of her hand, only for Cat Noir to bow, his hand outstretched, looking up at her with a smirk. May I have this dance, my lady? She gave him the tiniest smile and placed her hand in his. Of course. They placed their hands where they'd been earlier in the science lab, and then they started to dance, moving around the roof together, although Cat Noir didn't spin Marinette around like Adrian had done. He wanted to keep her close. You're pretty good at this, he said with a smirk. She blushed. A friend taught me. Oh? Who? Adrian, she whispered. He smiled. You can talk about him, you know. I don't mind. But something kind of happened. Oh, he asked, keeping them moving in time with the music. It was only a slow song. Neither of them were getting out of breath. And Marinette was letting go of control completely. Count Noir deciding their every move. He... We almost kissed. He was teaching me how to dance, and we both leaned in. Marinette bit her lip. But I pulled away. Oh? Why? I mean, you don't have to explain yourself, but I thought you liked him. I do, but I'd want to remember something like that. He narrowed his eyes. What do you mean by that? She looked away from him, but the candlelight illuminated the tears in her eyes. This will be the last time. Count Noir started to slow down their dancing. He felt like he had all of the clues to work out what she was trying to say, but his brain wouldn't make the final leap to get to the solution. The last time? The last time for what, he asked. The last time they danced? What does she mean? You know what I'm talking about, Marinette said, her voice shaking. She was about to cry, and so was he. Cat Noir stopped moving and he dropped his hands, but he stayed stood in front of Marinette. No, I don't. She wrung her hands together, fiddling with her fingers, still unable to look at him. I thought I would be okay now that you knew my identity, and I wish I was, but I'm not. I can't cope with the secret anymore. What secret? Of being Ladybug, Marinette said, finally meeting his eyes. This is my last time as her. I'm stopping being Ladybug. And the Guardian. His eyes widened in panic and he reached for her, but she stepped away from him, his claws brushing her arms. No, you can't. Please, Marinette. You can't. Why? She shook her head, tears starting to fall from her bluebell eyes now. I can't do it anymore, Kitty. He reached for her again, grabbing her hands this time. We'll do it together. Marinette shook her head again. Kitty, I want to be normal again. But if you do this, you'll forget me, he said, starting to cry too, just as rain began to fall slowly extinguishing all of the candles on the rooftop, but neither of them noticed. Marinette grimaced. I know, I want to remember you and everything we've been through, but I can't. It's too painful. But I don't want to be without you, he said, reaching up and cupping Marinette's face with one of his hands. I can't be without you. The Kwamis had warned him about this. Tiki had been worried she would give up being the Guardian, and although it had been in the back of Adrian's mind, he never thought Marinette would actually do it, and he couldn't let her do it. Master Fu has said it himself. She was the best ladybug to ever have existed. Paris couldn't lose her, and he couldn't lose her either. She'd forget ever meeting Adrian and how she felt about him, and he'd lose this amazing girl she'd become through using the miraculous. He had to stop her from doing this. Through their tears, they held eye contact. Princess, please. She shook her head. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm so sorry, Kitty. He stepped closer to her, hands still cupping her face. How can I carry on without you? You'll have to. 
She sniffed, wiped away some of her tears, then went up onto her tiptoes and kissed him on the cheek. Thank you. For everything, Cat Noir. She stepped away from him. Tiki, spots on. She transformed back into Ladybug, then grabbed her yo-yo and ran, jumping off the roof and out of his sight. Cat Noir didn't waste a second. He grabbed his phone from by the projector, not noticing the puddles of rain that had gathered on the screen, then took out his baton and went after her. But by now, he couldn't see her. He delayed by grabbing his phone. He ran down a few streets and checked on top of buildings, but there was no sign of her. But he couldn't give up. This couldn't end like this. He grabbed his baton and selected Ladybug in his contacts, but it went to voicemail straight away. She detransformed. Now glad he grabbed his phone, Count Noir unlocked it, his hand shaking slightly, and he rang Marinette, walking through Paris as he waited for her to pick up, his heart thumping faster than the dial tone. She had to pick up. If she picked up, maybe he could work out where she was from the noise in the background. She picked up on the fifth ring. Adrian? Her voice was quiet, and it sounded so sad. All he wanted right now was to comfort her. Hey, he said, pretending nothing was wrong as he walked faster, trying to locate her. He was only thankful it was raining. It meant most people were indoors. I was just wondering if you could help me with the homework from today? I'm a bit stuck, she sniffed. I am... Um, I'm sorry, I'm not at home right now. Oh, right, you were going to that dance. How was it? It was... She trailed off, then burst into tears. Marinette, he asked, the alarm he felt coming through now. He had to find her and fast, both before she could rescind the miracle box and before she could get akumatized. He started running, his boots slapping in puddles, him fervently looking down each alleyway he passed. What's wrong? Nothing. Marinette, tell me, I can help you. You can't help with this, Adrian. Not this time. She started to sob again right before she hung up, and he heard it then, his cat ears pricking up. The sound of a girl crying above the rain pounding against the pavement. He kept running, the sobbing getting louder as he got closer, and then he found her, curled up on the ground in an alleyway, the dress clinging to her because of the rain, and Tiki trying to console her. Marinette, please don't rescind the miracle box, the Kwame pleaded, and Cat Noir stepped into the alleyway, and Marinette gasped when she saw him. I agree with Tiki, he said, kneeling down in front of her. You have to reconsider, he said, voice shaking. He didn't even realise he was still crying. Marinette shook her head, still sobbing. She was starting to pant now. She was on the verge of a panic attack. He had to calm her down. I can't, Kitty, she managed to say. I don't want to remember. You can, my lady. I can help you. If you just let me. Claws in. She shrieked and covered her eyes, but the shock of him detransforming stopped her panting. Transform back, she shouted. No, Adrian said. He let his phone fall to the ground and he reached for Marinette's wrists and gently pressed her hands away from her face, but she kept her eyes screwed shut. Please, Marinette, open your eyes. You know who I am, he pleaded. I don't! His hands slipped down from her wrists so he could intertwine their fingers. You do. Think. Back to when you met Cat Noir. Who else did you meet then? Marinette's sobs started to subside and her hands relaxed in his. Adrian smiled. If only I had an umbrella on me right now. Adrian, she whispered. Open your eyes, princess, he whispered back. She did, and Marinette just stared at him for a moment. All this time? It was you? Of course it was, Bugaboo, he said with a wink. Marinette cried out in relief and practically collapsed against his chest, and Adrian wrapped his arms around her, holding her tight. He couldn't work out if her crying right now was out of relief, or if she was still upset, or if it was a mix of both, but he kept looking around, as did Tiki and Plague, to check for any Akum was coming their way. That was the last thing they needed to happen right now. But now Adrian had found her, the gravity of the situation started to sink in. He had almost lost Marinette, and he could still lose her. He had to act carefully and make sure she was alright if this was going to be okay. But first, he needed to get them out of the rain. He had barely noticed it when he'd been looking for her, but they were both getting drenched. He shifted Marinette around in his embrace so one arm was around her waist, the other behind her knees. She sniffed, pulling her head out of his chest. Where are we going? she asked, her voice trembling. Somewhere warm and dry. You don't have to do anything. I'll take us there. Plague claws in. She looped her arms around his shoulders, and once Tiki was settled in her lap, Count Noir stood up, grabbed his baton, and vaulted up to the rooftops. He went slow, not wanting to slip in the rain while holding Marinette's but also so he could make this last. What if this would be their last time together like this? 
he hoped he could convince her to change her mind. He jumped from the garden wall and through his open bedroom window, and he gently placed Marinette down. The sun had completely set now, and no lights were on, so it was dark, and he darted over to where the light switches were by the door. There we go, he said as he flipped them. Close in. He turned to look at Marinette, and in the harsh lights, she looked even sadder, her hair and dress drooping from the rainwater, face blotchy from all the crying. I can take you home, he suggested, walking back over to her, noticing how his shoes squelched when he moved. It really had rained hard. I just thought it would be better here. Only two Kwamis instead of a whole box full. Marinette nodded, managing a smile. Here's fine, she said, her voice a little scratchy from the crying. Do you have a towel or something? Right, of course. Adrian went into the bathroom and opened his closet to grab a towel. Then along with it, he took a pair of joggers and hoodie. Marinette would be really uncomfortable in a dress that wet. He went back out to where she was stood and handed them to her. You can change in the bathroom. She moved past him and into the room, sliding the doors shut behind her, and Adrian turned to Tiki and Plague. Did I do the right thing, he asked, keeping his voice low, revealing my identity to her? Both of the Kwamis nodded. I don't see how else she would have calmed her down, Tiki said. Thank you, Adrian. You still have to be careful, though. I know. I can't let her quit being guardian. The Kwamis went to sit over on the sofa, then Adrian quickly changed into his pyjamas. He didn't want to spend a moment longer in his soggy jeans. Just as he finished, Marinette came out of the bathroom, holding the towel and dress. She was wearing the clothes he had given her, her toes only just peeking out from the cuffs of the sweatpants, and her hands completely disappeared inside the hoodie. She looked very cute and he smiled at her. Better? he asked. She nodded and he took the dress from her, throwing it over his desk chair. Then he took the towel and Marinette's hand and led her to sit down on the bed. She perched on the edge, smoothing her sweater paws together, and Adrian knelt behind her. He carefully pulled out all of the bobby pins, letting the bun her hair was in fall down. Then he took the towel and slowly began to dry it. You don't have to, she started, but Adrian gently shushed her. I told you, let me take care of you. When Marinette didn't say anything else, he carried on slowly drying off each section of her hair before he went to get his comb from the bathroom and slowly got the tangles out too. There you go, he said, dropping the towel to the floor and putting the comb to one side, and Marinette shuffled round to face him. The blotchiness had disappeared from her face, and she looked a lot more relaxed. That was really nice, she said, and Adrian smiled, noting how much calmer she sounded. Thank you. You're welcome. Are you ready to talk now? Marinette curled her hands up in the hoodie in apprehension, but she nodded. Well, I guess now you know I'm truly here for you now. She smiled at that. Yeah, I do. And while I'm happy you're Cat Noir, apart from my parents, it means you're the only person who is truly here for me. Before Marinette could start to despair, Adrian just shrugged. Quality over quantity, my lady. She smiled again. Yeah. Are you still going to rescind the miracle box, though? Marinette bit her lip, then shook her head. No. I'm sorry for being selfish. If I did that, you'd be all alone, and you need someone to talk to as well. And you spent all of this time trying to make me feel better, and I just put you through that emotional trauma too, of making you think you'd lose me. He reached for her hands and held them through the fabric of his jumper. You weren't being selfish, princess. I just wish you'd told me that you were even considering doing something like that. When did you decide? I've been thinking about it for a while, but I made the final decision today, when I got that note. Rescinding the miracle box would erase my memories, so I'd forget about anything traumatic I went through as Ladybug, but also all of the stuff with Lila. It seemed like the best solution, and maybe this time, when I went back to school, I'd believe her lies. Knowing Lila, she wouldn't have let it go. She would have tormented Mariner even if she did have amnesia. I don't think so. You're a good person. You'd have still known she was lying. Is that, is that the reason why you wouldn't let me kiss you? Because you were planning to erase your memories? Marinette's cheeks immediately heated up. Yes, but also because I like Cat Noir too. I didn't want to kiss you until I worked out which boy I liked, because I was so confused. I guess I know now why I was so confused. He smirked. Yeah, the Kwamis told me. You knew, she exclaimed, and Adrian just laughed, both because he found it funny and because he was glad she was slowly sounding more like herself. About your crush on Cat Noir? Only for a few weeks. About your crush on me? 
since Mr. Damocles was akumatized. She groaned and bowed her head since she couldn't hide it in her hands. This is so embarrassing. Adrian just smiled. Marinette, I love you too. She peeked up at him through a gap in her fringe. You do? But I'm nothing like Ladybug. I already told you. You are exactly like her. The costume isn't what makes you Ladybug. And the costume isn't why I love you. Marinette's blush got worse, but she squeezed Adrian's hands. I love you too, she whispered, clearly nervous. In that moment, Adrian didn't think he'd ever smiled that wide in his life. He had dreamed for so long for her to say those words to him. But you're going to forget me. Marinette shook her head. Master Fu erased his memories, but when he saw Marianne again, he knew he loved her. I know I fell in love with you again. Adrian knew there was no guarantee of that happening, but deep down, he felt if he was the guardian and had to rescind the miracle box, then he would fall in love with Marinette again too. He hugged her, and Adrian could feel the shape of Marinette's smile against his chest. Things weren't okay, but they were definitely out of the woods. He pulled away again, gently placing a kiss on Marinette's forehead, and she blushed again, but didn't move back to where she had been sat. She stayed in his arms, and Adrian gently played with her hair, neither of them breaking eye contact despite how close they were. He saw Marinette glance up at his lips. Are you going to kiss me? His lady whispered. Adrian blushed now. You want me to? After earlier, I wasn't sure, and you're still upset, and I- Adrian, she said, cutting him off. I love you. He smiled. I love you too. This wasn't his first kiss. He'd kissed her twice before, and while he'd seen the photo evidence of both kisses, he didn't remember either one, to Adrian, it was technically his first kiss, but he didn't feel nervous. He gently cupped the back of Marinette's head, one hand holding hers, then leant down and kissed her. It probably only lasted for three heartbeats, but to Adrian, it seemed like forever. He'd wished for this to happen for so long, and imagined it in so many ways from the pictures taken of the two of them, but the real thing was so much better. Kissing Marinette made his head spin, and he was certain he would have fallen off the bed if the hand she had on his shoulder wasn't there to ground him. He pulled away, his nose brushing against Marinette's, and the two teenagers smiled at each other, both of them blushing. You have freckles, he whispered, little breathless. You don't, she whispered back. Her hand moved from his shoulder to his cheek, cupping his jaw, neither of them moving away from each other. I had hoped Cat Noir was you. I felt so bad for having feelings for two boys. I could imagine. <laughs> Speaking of which, what do we do? Shall we be together as Adrian and Marinette? or as Ladybug and Cat Noir. Adrian and Marinette, she replied. Shadow Moth can't know Ladybug and Cat Noir are together. It'll make him think we know each other's identities. So, no calling me princess when I'm Ladybug. He pouted. What about Bugaboo when you're Marinette? She scowled and folded her arms, but it was difficult to appear grumpy when she looked so cute swaddled in clothing that was too big for her. Never call me that again. He laughed and pressed a quick kiss to her lips to get rid of the scowl. Of course, princess. I'm sorry about the dress, by the way, with how wet it got. It really is beautiful. Adrian shrugged. It'll dry, and you can wear it on our next dates. Not that there's any pressure to go on loads of dates or anything. I don't want to put any extra stress on you with dating. And I can transform and come and see you at night. We don't even need to go out anywhere on a date. And Adrian, she said. It's fine. Spending time with you has never stressed me out. And it'll be easier since we can transform to see each other so we can have a date whenever. Although, are you even allowed to date? Adrian frowned. His father had never said he couldn't have a girlfriend, but knowing him, it would be something he would forbid, especially if he didn't like the girl. I don't know. I don't care. You're the only person I want to spend time with. Marinette smiled, and in a moment of bravery, she leant up and quickly kissed him, and Adrian couldn't stop the smile that spread over his face. Do you, um, do you want to cuddle? he asked. He frequently imagined getting the chance to cuddle with her, but he wasn't being entirely selfish. Hopefully it would bring Marinette some more comfort. Tonight had been emotional for both of them. She blushed, but nodded, and they both lay down. Marinette automatically curled up against his chest, and he wrapped his arms around her, noses almost brushing together again. Right now, both teenagers wanted to be close to each other. I should be going soon, she whispered. I don't want you to leave. Marinette smiled. Me neither. 
I wish we could stay like this forever. We can do it again, tomorrow night, after school. Her face dropped at the mention of school. I don't want to go to school. I know, princess, but we can't let Lila win. Do you have any ideas yet? Marinette asked. Not really. The safest option will be to tell the teachers. This has gone past petty rivalry now you've been threatened. But I need to be able to vouch for you. So I'll talk to my father in the morning. She looked a little shocked. Really? I have to. Lila is one of his models, and we don't know how this will go. I need to tell him. And as cold as he seems, he does care about me. But it could result in me being homeschooled again since I hid this from him. If you get pulled out, I think I'll move schools. Adrian frowned. You shouldn't have to do that. I know. But I wouldn't be able to bear it without you there. It's already difficult now. What will you tell your father? The truth. He can't have someone as vicious as Lila representing the brand. Assuming it goes well with him, once we get to school, we'll talk to Mr. Damocles and Miss Bustier. People might not believe you, but most people still believe me. And we could use Markov to check the authenticity of the notes. Marinette smiled at that. Then they'll know there's no way I could have written it to frame them. Exactly. And then hopefully, Alia and Alex will speak up about Lila. They still believe her lies, but they have to know that threatening you is wrong. And I'm pretty sure Lila will be expelled. Her smile got even bigger. Do you really think this could work? I don't know, but it's worth a shot. She nodded and closed her eyes, and Adrian did the same. And they lay there, just holding each other. He felt the same as Marinette. He wished they could stay like this forever. We should be getting back, Tiki said. And Adrian and Marinette opened their eyes to see her and Plague hovering above them. The other Kwamis will be worried. Marinette nodded and she sat up. You're right. I've been gone too long. And I need to go and tidy up on the roof of Montparnasse Tower, Adrian said, sitting up too. Plague rolled his eyes. Now? I want to sleep. We either go now or we get up super early to do it. The black cat Kwame groaned and Marinette giggled. Is he always like this? Yes, Adrian said. He doesn't even always want to transform when there's an Akuma. Marinette folded her arms and gave Plague a disapproving look. Don't look at me like that, you'll make me feel bad. Tiki giggled. That's the point, Stinky Sock. Plague immediately smirked. You know I can't resist it when you call me that sugar cube. Tiki scowled now and Marinette laughed at their antics. She'd never got to see them interact before. Adrian stood up from the bed and held out a hand to pull Marinette up. I'll take you home first, then I'll go and clean up. I'll just go and get changed. She went to grab her dress, but before she could get far, he pulled her back to him. Don't be ridiculous, it needs washing. You can go home in my clothes. Marinette blushed, and her eyes crinkled up as she smiled. I might sleep in them, if that's okay. I know it sounds silly, but they're really big on me, and knowing they're yours makes me feel safe. Adrian's heart pounded at that admission. Of course you can sleep in them. Whatever makes you happy. I'll give you them back tomorrow. He shook his head. Keep them. You look much cuter in them than I ever did. Marinette giggled and went up onto her tiptoes to kiss Adrian on the cheek. Thank you. Plague made a gagging sound. I don't think I can stand much more of this. Adrian rolled his eyes. Plague, claws out. Transforming caused the Kwame to disappear and Cat Noir smiled. Much better. Marinette laughed again and grabbed her dress and shoes from where she'd left them. Then Cat Noir picked her up. Ready to go, he asked, once Tiki had come over. She nodded and he jumped from the window to the garden wall, then went onto the nearest roof. The rain had stopped now, and a lot of the water had already dried up, so he didn't need to be that careful. But he went slow anyway, wanting to extend his time with Marinette. When the evening had begun, he had no idea it would end like this, but he was happy it did. And in the same vein, he had no idea what school would be like tomorrow for either of them. Count Noir gently landed on her balcony, then placed Marinette down. There we go. Are you feline better, my lady? She giggled as she put her shoes and dress on the deck chair. All of those silly puns. I can't imagine it was Adrian aggressed. He waggled his eyebrows. Don't worry, I'll be sure to make them all the time now. Marinette rolled her eyes, but still went back over to him. Oh God, spare me. I know you love them. Then he couldn't help but smile. And I know you love me. She stepped closer to him. I do. He wrapped his arms around her waist, pulling her closer still. Then he leant down and they met in another kiss. This one didn't last as long as their first though, when they heard over a dozen gasps. They pulled away and saw that all of the Kwamis had come up to the balcony, probably having heard them arrive. 
but they wouldn't have expected to see Marinette and Cat Noir kissing. The teenagers both left, but Marinette stayed in the circle of the superhero's arms. I'll be down in a minute to talk to you all, okay? Just let me say goodnight. Tiki ushered her fellow Kwamis to phase back inside, and once they were gone, Marinette turned back to Cat Noir, her fingers tracing over the lines that accentuated his shoulders on his costume. What are you thinking, princess? he asked. That I'm dreaming. Is it a good dream? The best, she said, looking up and meeting his eyes. That I'm scared about waking up and all of this being over. Don't be. I'll be here for you. When you get up in the morning, get dressed, then wait for me on your balcony. When you see me get out of the car, come down and meet me. We'll do all of this together. Okay, Kitty. With a smile, they kissed each other again, but Marinette pulled away when she started giggling. We'll have to stop doing that. What? Stop kissing? He asked with a pout. No, not that. But I can't date Adrian Agrest and then be seen kissing Cat Noir on my balcony. He sighed. That is a shame. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Marinette laughed again. Oh, he wouldn't? They kissed again, and this time Cat Noir pulled away. I have to go back to the tower. I'll see you in the morning, my lady. She smiled at him. Good night, Kitty. After one last kiss, Count Noir reluctantly took out his baton and left. But as he ran across the rooftops, he kept glancing back at the bakery. He could see Marinette, still stood on her balcony, watching him, a small smile on her face. He didn't know how tomorrow would go, but as long as they had each other, they'd be okay. Adrian understood what Marinette meant about this feeling dreamlike. When he woke up, she was all he could think about and he was worried it had been a dream too. But the bobby pins from her bun were now scattered on the floor, a pair of joggers and a hoodie were missing, and he had a good morning text from Marinette, filled with heart emojis. Last night hadn't been a dream, but it certainly felt like one. He sent her a text back, smiling the whole time as he typed. He always looked forward to seeing Marinette, but today he felt excited about it. Although he guessed he probably wouldn't get to kiss her until later, Marinette was shy at the best of times, but they probably shouldn't kiss at school. He got out of bed, leaving Plague to snooze for a bit longer. Tidying up the roof of Montparnasse Tower had taken longer than expected, but he wasn't tired in the slightest. It wasn't over though. Marinette still wasn't feeling great, but hopefully, if today went well, she'd be feeling a lot better about it all. Adrian got dressed, then he went downstairs, and Natalie was waiting in the foyer. Good morning, Adrian, she said, looking a little tired. She hadn't been feeling well lately. You should go back to bed, he said. She gave him a small smile. I think I will for a little while. Your breakfast is waiting for you. Adrian smiled and went into the dining room, but he didn't shut the door fully behind him. He kept it propped open, and he stood and watched as Natalie struggled back upstairs. He knew he should have gone to help her, but he needed to wait to get to his father. When she finally made it back to her room, Adrian left the dining room and went straight into his father's atelier, not bothering to knock. This couldn't wait. His father, like always, was stood at his tablet in front of the portrait of his mother, and he looked up at Adrian, eyes narrowed. I am working, Adrian. You know not to interrupt me. He could have easily balked and apologised, but Adrian steeled himself and walked right up to his father. I know, but this can't wait. Lila is still one of your models, right? Yes. You are well aware she is. You are going on a shoot with her next week. I'm not doing it. His father immediately scowled. Adrian, I do not have time for... She's bad for the brand. Adrian knew he wouldn't normally speak like this to his father, but Marinette was in danger, and he'd do anything for his lady. She threatened to push someone at school down the stairs. The scowl faded to shock. I see. That is rather... serious. It is. Particularly as the person she's threatened is my girlfriend. The scowl returned. I never gave you permission to date. You never said I couldn't. His father sighed and took off his glasses so he could pinch the bridge of his nose. Who is it? Marinette Dupencheng. His father nodded and put his glasses back on. I suppose it could be worse. She is a talented designer. She is, Adrian said, ignoring the first part of his father's comments. But Lila cannot model for you if she has threatened your son's girlfriend. Lila has been bullying her for months now. She needs protection. Gabriel averted his gaze. He needed more convincing to drop Lila. I love Marinette. I love her a lot. I'd do anything for her. The same way you'd have done anything for Mum. They both looked at the portrait. If she was still here and someone who worked for you threatened her, would you allow them to continue to work for you? Gabriel looked back at his son. 
Marinette will wear Gabriel on all of your dates. A photographer and your bodyguard will follow you. That's fine with me, Adrian said, trying not to sound too happy about this arrangement. He had zero problem modelling with Marinette's, although he wasn't sure how she would feel about it. And they could go on proper dates at night if one of them transformed so they could go and see the other person. His father probably thought making their dates into photo shoots would be a punishment for making him drop Lila, but it was actually the best outcome. It was better than anything Adrian could have imagined. Last night, he'd fully expected for his father to withdraw him from DuPont. Fine, his father said, not expecting Adrian to agree to it. I'll have Natalie prepare Lila's contract termination. Thank you, Adrian said, then left the atelier before his father could change his mind. He just hoped things at school would go that well. After he ate, he went to get Plag in his school bag, making sure to grab the threatening note before he left. His bodyguard drove him to school, and as they neared DuPont, Adrian could already see Marinette stood on her balcony through the car window. His heartbeat sped up at the sight of her, and although she couldn't see him yet, he saw her smile when she saw his car. Adrian got out of the car, his eyes immediately locking with Marinette's, and she blushed, gave him a tiny wave, then she went back into her room. He stayed stood outside school, watching as the rest of the students arrived. Alia and Lila walked in together, both of them frowning at Adrian, but they didn't come near him. They probably didn't even know that he knew about the note. He turned to watch the bakery instead, and not long later, Marinette came bouncing out, looking happier than she had in a while, and she had a pastry bag in hand. Good morning, princess, he said, leaning down and giving her a kiss on the cheek. She blushed again. Hi, she said, gone all shy since they were in public. But then she held up the pastry bag. I brought shoe buns for your bodyguard. At the mention of him, he rolled down the window. He wasn't allowed to leave until he'd seen Adrian go into school. Marinette smiled at him and handed him the bag. I put different flavours in there for you to try. He made a slight grunt, then rolled the window back up, and Adrian took Marinette's hand in his. I think he likes you. She laughed. Yeah, sure he does. Although he does prefer superhero dolls to pastries. You ready to go in? Marinette bit her lip as she stared at the school. I guess. I take it that it went well with your dad. Surprisingly, yes, he said as he started their walk up the front steps. He's terminating Lila's contract, but all of our dates have to be photo shoots instead. I agreed because we still have our chances to go on dates, but I should have checked with you before I said yes. I don't know how you feel about being a model. I doubt I'll be very good at it. I'm too clumsy, she said with a smile. You'll be fine. It's a date, so just stick close to me. You really don't mind? He asked as they walked through the entrance to the school. She shook her head. Not at all. Like you said, we still have the chance to go on dates. Thank you for talking to your father. I know it must have been hard. Adrian nodded. Honestly, I can't believe I actually managed to do it. I think I only did it because I knew I was doing it for you. Thank you, Manon. Marinette kissed him on the cheek then, but their sweet moment was cut short by a sob. Still holding hands, they looked around and saw Lila, Alia and Alex stood close by, and Lila looked like she was going to cry. Now they're together, their bullying will get even worse, Lila said, whimpering at the end, and Alia and Alex wrapped their arms around her. Do you seriously think it's okay to bring Adrian into this? Alia shouted to Marinette. Don't bring him down to your level. You're truly awful. Adrian felt Marinette cower at Alia's words, and he let go of her hand, but only so he could stand in front of her. You cannot talk to her like that, he said with a scowl, hoping his face mimicked his father's. He didn't want to be rude, but he'd had it with the way people were treating Marinette. After everything she had done for Paris, she did not deserve this. But even so, her being Ladybug shouldn't matter. No one should be treated like this, particularly when they'd done nothing wrong. Instead of backing off, Alia and Alex returned his scowl and marched over to them, Lila trailing behind with a smirk on her face. Thankfully, Marinette stayed hidden behind Adrian's larger frame, but she reached for her hand and he squeezed it to comfort her. Adrian, Marinette has seriously hurt Lila when she pushed her down the stairs, Alia said. And now you're dating her? What is wrong with you? What's going on? Miss Bustier asked, and the five teenagers looked up to see their concerned teacher, along with Mr Damocles. Adrian had been so focused on Marinette that he hadn't even realised the two teachers were in the courtyard and would have eventually heard their arguing along with the rest of the students, who were all staring, probably excited that the conflicts between Lila and Marinette had finally come to a head. Adrian had hoped that he and Marinette could have gone to the principal's office to deal with this quietly, but it didn't seem that would be happening anymore. Marinette, Alex said. She's been bullying Lila. Again. It's not true, Adrian blurted out. One of them has threatened Marinette. 
In writing, Miss Bustier and Mr. Damocles exchanged a concerned look. Do you have proof? Their principal asked. The model let go of Marinette's hand to dig around in his back, and he held the torn out notepad paper up, and Lila, Alia, and Alex all visibly recoiled. The two teachers scanned it, getting more concerned the more they read. I don't want to believe that any of you would do this, Miss Bustier said. But did one of you girls write it? She asked, looking at Lila, Alia, and Alex. Of course not, Alia said. We can prove it, Marinette said, finally speaking up and coming to stand at Adrian's side, taking his hand in hers, with Markov. At the mention of his name, Markov floated away from his place by Max's shoulder and came over to the school's entrance where they were all stood. How can I assist you? He asked with a happy chirp. Markov, can you analyse the handwriting of the note and tell us who wrote it? The robot immediately scanned the note Adrian was holding up, and the pixels changed to a frown. The contents of the note is rather alarming. Are you sure you wish to know? Yes, Miss Bustier said. The writing is a 100% match for Alias Azair, but the drawing is a 100% match for Alex Gubdell. Their teachers turned to face the two girls, Lila still cowering behind them. What do you have to say for yourselves? We... we... Alia bowed her head in shame, but Alex jumped in. Marinette made us write it. Before Marinette could defend herself, Markov hummed. The ink is dry now, but judging by its age, this was written at approximately 10 minutes past 8 yesterday morning. The three of you were at school at that time. Marinette was late and did not arrive until 18 minutes past 9. Adrian didn't bother trying to hide his smile as he lowered the note. He thought Markov would only be able to tell who wrote it, not when. Alex and Lila's faces dropped. There wasn't a way to get around that. Markov's lying, Lila shouted, realising she was finally starting to lose now. Max came over, not looking impressed Lila had said that about his invention. Markov doesn't know how to lie. And he's right. I was at school then and saw the three of you. Marinette didn't arrive until after the bell went. The rest of the class all nodded in agreement, including Miss Bustier, and Lila held a hand to her chest, mocking being hurt. Why are you all saying these things? Especially you, Adrian. Your father would be so disappointed in you. My father already knows, he shot back. And before Lila could ask what he meant, Natalie came into the school. Miss Sankur, Mr. Damocles exclaimed, obviously noticing her ill state. Is everything okay? She nodded, a thick document in hand. My apologies for disrupting the school day, but I have some urgent business that cannot wait. She turned to Marinette. I have given your parents your modelling contract. Please sign it by the end of the day. Then she looked at Lila and held out the document. Lila, your modelling contract with Gabriel is hereby terminated due to threatening misconduct while under the Gabriel name. The fake upset vanished from Lila's face in favour of anger. You can't be serious. We are. Nastly let the document fall to the ground when Lila didn't take it. You will never model with us again. But her eyes kept darting around, desperate for anyone to leap in and help her. She hadn't been proven to be a liar yet, but the doubt had been sown in people's minds now after what Markov had proven. You have to believe me, she shouted, looking at Malen, Julika and Rose. I knew nothing about that note. Alia and Alex must have written it themselves. Alia and Alex glared at Lila then. Stop lying, Alex hissed. You asked us to write it so Adrian wouldn't get involved with Marinette. Alia turned to Mr. Damocles. That's the truth. Lila was worried that Marinette would hurt Adrian. So she asked us to write the note. But we'd never actually do what the note said. See, Lila said with a smile, turning to Natalie. I was just trying to protect Adrian. His father asked me to. According to Adrian, you have been hurting and threatening his girlfriend for months now, which is why your contract has been terminated. Not from this single incident, Natalie replied, deadpan as ever. It would take a lot for her to believe the lies of someone like Lila. He's lying, Lila shouted trying to get an emotional reaction out of Natalie, but her bored resting face didn't change. Adrian would not lie. She shifted her gaze to the rest of the students. And I think all of you know that. Natalie took her leave then, making her way out of the school, and Adrian and Marinette looked at their classmates. They had to believe them now, right? Chloe was the first to step forward. My Adrikans wouldn't lie. Although I'm not so sure about the Baker girl. But... She trailed off, looking at their joined hands. He would never date someone who lies. It was an odd mellow moment for Chloe that Adrian had seen sometimes when they were children, and Marinette had very occasionally seen when Chloe used to be Queen Bee. It wasn't a side to her that she often displayed in public, but they were both glad that Chloe was choosing now to show it. I agree with Chloe, Sabrina said, giving Marinette a kind smile. And I agree with Markov, Max said. I've programmed him myself. 
I know he's correct about the notes. And Miss Sankar is right too. We all know Adrian wouldn't lie about Lila. Kim stepped forward. His confused stare thankfully directed at Lila and not Marinette's. But why would you lie about all of this? And have Alia write that note? It doesn't make any sense. You're so kind, Lila. Because Adrian is meant to be with me, Lila shouted. Are you really that stupid, Kim? I'm the pretty one and the clever one and the one who deserves someone like Adrian, not Marinette. Miss Bustier frowned. You lied about Marinette bullying you because you were jealous? The contents of Lila's outburst dawned on her and she shook her head, the fake vulnerable look returning to her face. No, of course not. She pushed me down the stairs. I'm just trying to protect myself. That was a lie too, wasn't it? Mark asked. I bet she never touched you. Lila looked back and forth over the crowd of students surrounding them now, but they were all glaring at Lila. They just found out she tricked all of them, and none of them were happy about it. Miss Rossi, Miss Cesare, Miss Cubdell, Miss Adamicles said. I think it's time to call your parents. The three girls trudged after the principal and went up to his office, and Miss Bustier turned to Marinette with a smile. Do you need me to ring your parents to tell them about this? Marinette shook her head. I'll tell them later. What will happen to Alia, Alex and Lila? Well, what do you want to happen? She bit her lip. Lila's really good at manipulating people. I don't know what she did, but it made Alia and Alex believe whatever she said. It's like she was controlling them. I don't want Mr. Damocles to be as harsh on them as he is on Lila. Miss Bustier smiled. I'll let him know. Will you be comfortable with them remaining at school? Marinette hesitated, and Adrian looked at her. Tell her what you need, princess. I think I should be okay with Alia and Alex staying. But after everything Lila has done... I'd be seriously worried for Marinette's safety if Lila was allowed to remain at the school, Adrian said, telling their teacher what he knew his girlfriend wouldn't. She was too nice. Okay. Come on now, everyone. Class begins in five minutes. Miss Bustier left, going upstairs, but the rest of the students gathered around Adrian and Marinette. We're so sorry for believing Lila, Marinette, Rose said, tears in her eyes. Do you know what you've put her through? Adrian asked, knowing Marinette would never tell someone like Rose that. But he was right. In addition to almost causing Marinette to give up being Ladybug and the Guardian, the amount of mental distress it caused her had been astronomical. It was only through her sheer will and Adrian helping her that she hadn't been akumatized. Rose backed away, her and Julika looking guilty. We really are sorry, Marinette, Millen said. Lila is very convincing. But we should have known better. Most of us have known you for years. We should have known you would never have lied about something like this. Or ever pushed someone down the stairs, Nathaniel added. His arms slung over Mark's shoulders. Marinette smiled at their classmates. Well, you know now. Thank you for apologising. She turned to Chloe. And thank you for what you said. She scoffed and flipped her blonde hair. Whatever, Dupencheng. You're ridiculous, utterly ridiculous. She stalked off towards the stairs to make her way to their classroom, Sabrina in tow, and Adrian just shook his head. Typical Chloe. The rest of their class started to follow her, the other students also dispersing, and he turned to his girlfriend. How was that? The smile she gave him was beautiful. Amazing. I never could have done that without you. Adrian let the threatening note fall to the ground and wrapped his arms around her. Any time. What's Ladybug without her cat Noir to help her? She giggled and quickly pressed a kiss to his lips now no one was around. Thank you, kitty cat. Seriously, if you hadn't been there last night. She bowed her head as she trailed off, but Adrian curled one of his fingers and put it under Marinette's chin, then tilted her head upwards. Don't think about that. You didn't give up the miracle box, and you still have all of your memories. And now Lila is hopefully out of the picture, you'll feel happier. And why wouldn't you feel happier now that I'm your boyfriend? Marinette rolled her eyes. I'm expecting to feel incredible. Don't you mean perfect? He asked with a smile. She started to laugh, but she stopped when they both saw a purple butterfly heading for Mr. Damocles' office. Ready? Adrian asked. I'll race you. Marinette broke out of his hold and sprinted to the locker room, and with a smile, he ran after her. He had almost lost his lady for good last night, but she'd come back to him, and things could only get better from here.